Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Ji from University of Virginia. Uh, today, I'm very happy to introduce my work, uh, Deep Word Bug, which can generate uh, adversarial text examples to evade deep learning classifier. So, so I will go from this aspect. So to start with, uh, this is a screenshot of the deep learning classification system that uh, decide whether an input message is toxic or not. So the input can be, uh, the input can be showing here. Uh, the, the input can be put here and it will automatically give output and the prediction score that how likely it thinks that this is toxic or not. So such system is, uh, users can access this system by using some web, web, web page interface and uh, it's generally a black box to the user so that uh, the user can't get access to the model, the parameters, or even know the structure of the model. So currently it's, it's becoming a growing trend of uh, deep learning applications that uh, it, these models will be deployed on the uh, cloud servers and uh, users can get access to them using the mobile devices or something. Yeah, so users can get access to them using some terminal machine like uh, mobile devices. So it's generally a black box setting and uh, it becomes more and more uh, popular. So uh, while m uh, previous research mostly focuses on this white box setting and image case, our work targets on this black box setting and the text case. So generally the application scenario is like this. So we want to flip the prediction of a sentiment analyzer. And uh, at first, uh, this uh, deep learning model makes correct perturbation, uh, cor cor correct, uh, correct, give correct answers. And uh, when I send this model and the input into the, uh, our uh, deep work back system, it will generate some slight di difference in the input and it will flip the prediction to the next review. So uh, it's generally a, a straightforward process. So I, uh, we want to keep it effect, effective. So uh, it's, there's no loop in this process and it uh, will create a minimum uh, adversarial insight. <coughs> so our definition of adversarial sample is present here. So originally there's a, a classifier from info space X to alpha space Y. And uh, our original sample is this small X and this adversarial example x prime is equal to this x plus a perturbation delta x. Well, this delta x is limited by some, the p norm is smaller than some constant epsilon, and the x prime should still be a valid input, so it's still in the input space x. And this, uh, the most importantly, this fx, that prediction output is different from fx prime. Uh, but this is in a continuous space, like traditionally on the image case. So when it moves to the text, text case, it's symbolic space. So it's, it's hard to find the perturbation of X. So uh, there's no definition of, uh, for example, one word minus another word. And also it's very hard to find a metric to measure this perturbation. So in our case, we define this uh, difference as the uh, modification on the character level. And uh, we define this uh, metric as the edit distance between the two samples. So generally our method contains three parts, this scorer, this ranker, and this transformation. So it first find those important words, give them a score, and uh, uh, it generates a modification on those words at top scored. And uh, the final perturbation is generally defined as the uh, summation of the all the at distance difference on every uh, single word. So, the first part is the scoring functions. We want our scoring function can select the important word. They, can, they, they should be like effective to calculate and uh, we want it to be black box. So generally uh, this inspired, get inspired from the uh, sequential manner of the text input. So, so first we compare this and nothing and put them into the model and get two scores and uh, 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 we calculate the difference of these two. And uh, for the next word, we compare with the forward part, the preceding part, and calculate the difference. 
And for the third word, we ca calculate the difference, and uh, we calculate uh, it for every word, and we do a comparison. After that, we think that the, uh, each part, uh, the, the higher score one means they have a bigger uh, importance in the final prediction, so that we uh, can do the modification on it, and it's uh, like highly likely that we can change the final prediction. So uh, the, the, this uh, scoring function only considers the preceding part, so we also design another uh, scoring function ab uh, that consider about the succeeding part. Uh, it can, uh, generally is sending this part and this part into the model and compare the difference of the output. And uh, we can combine these two methods to have a, a fi full uh, view of the context. It's generally a summation of the previous two uh, scores. So after the uh, com calculation of all the score functions, uh, we rank all the scores, uh, we rank all the words according to the scores and within the top rank words by doing this simple transformation. So we designed this transformation because they have two uh, good properties that if we generate such small perturbation, um, machine learning model which use a dictionary will view this words not in the dictionary so they view this as unknown and they, ca they cannot uh, uh, gain further information on it. On it. And uh, by doing such small perturbation, it's uh, we can control the edit distance of the modification. And this is the final process. So generally, an info sentence, uh, info sequence uh, sending to the, our uh, uh, algorithm will get their scores and uh, it ranks the scores and generate the modification on the top rank scores and finally we get the other sample. So uh, we performed the experiment on this data set uh, this large uh, uh, text data sets, they are, they are, they are, all, uh, they are all classification tasks, but they have different tasks, so they also have different number of classes. So uh, we compare this work with two baselines. Uh, the first one is the random selection award, which is similar to this paper, and the second one is also uh, is judging the importance of word using the magnitude of gradient, which is this paper. And uh, uh, sorry. Oh, yes. So uh, this part is our deep work method. It achieves the uh, best, uh, much better result compared to the previous three uh, methods. So the y-axis is the relative performance decrease that is averaged over the eight data sets. So if anyone is interested on the detail of the result, you can. Uh, Read, read our archive paper with the same title. So, <coughs> uh, yeah. So uh, we, we also study the transferability of the ideal sample that whether the ideal sample generated on one model can be also attack another model. So we train four different uh, 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 RSTM models. The first, uh, there are two of them are uh, bidirectional, two of them are not, and two of them are trained using random embedding. The other two are trans uh, trained using using pre-trained uh, uh, embedding. So uh, by using this different uh, word embedding, they are still uh, uh, e uh, still able to uh, reduce the uh, accuracy from ninety percent to around twenty to fifty percent. So uh, uh, we also study that whether this tra different transformation function has an effect on the our. Uh, the different uh, attacking performance. So it generally has a very slight difference between this uh, methods. So this y-axis is accuracy. This x-axis is number of word modified. So generally when you modify like 10 to 20 words, it, the accuracy is reduced a lot. And also uh, uh, we, we study whether our adverse samples are strong that is if it can successfully make the perturbation uh, ac accuracy with a high probability. So uh, this result shows that we, our uh, adverse sample are very, have very high probability, so make the machine learning model believe with this ground answer with a very high probability. So <coughs> we also study whether this, uh, the performance of adverse training on this using the adverse sample uh, generated uh, using our method. So 
generally the accuracy on the raw inputs slightly decreased, but uh, uh, after some epochs, the accuracy on the address ad samples increased a lot. However, it's still uh, not uh, close to the original samples. We also study a, a kind of defense by the auto corrector because uh, generally we create typos and this can fix the titles, typos. So uh, it seems that uh, by using the auto corrector on the simple attacks, it uh, uh, recovers a lot of accuracy. However, when you uh, switch to the a little stronger at, at attacks like removing two characters in, inside a word, it will, uh, the accuracy will still reduce a lot. So generally, uh, also there's a, one problem that to uh, implement this auto character in the real practice, they will in increase the overhead and if it can also be utilized by the attacker. So uh, 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 we, we believe that our method is, is good with this defense. So generally, uh, we compare with these two related work. They generally uh, uh, boast the white box method. So the first one, random pick word, and apply the, this gradient-based uh, algorithm directly on the word embedding, and then do a projection. And second one is pick, use the, the important word, use the gradient, and generate linguistic-based modification on the words. So both methods are doing it iterative approach. And uh, our method is just a straightforward ap approach that doesn't uh, uh, include any loop. So it's uh, much faster than the previous approaches. So uh, that's, that's it. So uh, our method is black box and we achieve good performance with this method and the transferability is also good. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there any questions? Okay, so. Hi, so for the defense, you said autocorrect, but you then, then the assumption is that it is one language, right? So uh, you're, yeah. you're assuming that it's in English? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. yeah. Also, if you only uh, directly change the character level, uh, is it very easy to be detected by just a spelling check? Oh. Uh, this auto character is actually yeah, spelling, spelling check. Yeah. Okay. So Have you considered like directly add the perturbation in the embedding space so that you can oh. map to the original? So the embedding space is a part of the model. So uh, because we assume that it's a black box attack, so we don't have any like information <coughs> about the embedding. So, oh, okay. so this is the, ma the major reason. But you can also, do the transferability uh, as well. Yeah. <laughs> uh, is there any questions? I'll ask one. So, um, so I guess I was wondering, uh, how is this going to play out in terms of the users noticing? Sorry, like the, the users, the human being noticing the change oh. in the characters, because it's true that you know sometimes when you read it, there is there are some characters that are, are flipped, or some a character is missing and so on. You might not notice, but it, but those are. I mean, there are very specific mistakes that you don't notice at all, and some other surveys, if they are completely random, then you might actually notice to be wrong. Right? So, uh, so uh, uh, I think your, answer, your question is about uh, whether the human can notice this, this change, right? Right, right. So uh, the thing is, um, we, we control this at a distance to make this uh, perturbation has a very small a difference to the to the human because um, actually there are psychological studies about this that uh, like uh, people can fluently read those uh, um, those paragraphs including some typos. So yeah, yeah, I'm aware of that. But uh, what, what I'm thinking about is that that is that um, I'm wondering. So th those mistakes that the human beings, according to these studies you're mentioning, done. Uh, you know, don't notice, they're not completely random, right? Uh, uh, so they, they, they actually have uh, probably some, some properties, right, that, uh, that allow a human being not to notice them. But, but you're not injecting that sort of domain knowledge I I into your adversarial examples, if I understand correctly, but, right? Uh, actually, what we want to do is, is to fool the deep learning classifier. We don't care that if, it's, it's if this has some difference on the human level. Like, uh, there, there will be some difference, but to the human, but if the, uh, uh, if it still preserves the, the original meaning, 
I, I think I think it will still preserve the original meaning because we only change the character level. So if uh, the character different difference is small, it will still pr preserve the original meaning to the human. But to the different character, it can't uh, like identify the original meaning. So I think it's still a successful attack. Uh, can I say, um, kind of like similar approach was uh, adopted uh, for spammers, you know, like misspelling words to yes. bypass filters. And apparently hashing was, you know, something that, I wouldn't say completely solved the problem, but it proved the results. Like how robust is your method if uh, somebody's using, you know, uh, text hashing in order to build a linear classifier meaning? Uh, still, have you tested that? So um, it's generally, uh, generally it's, it's uh, depends on the, uh, the develop of the machine learning model. So uh, if the, uh, I, I believe that if you uh, use a similar ar architect, it will still uh, able to uh, attack the machine learning model like this. Next question. Okay. Thanks to the speaker again.